what's going on everyone welcome back to power by primus and in today's video we're going to be doing a deck profile video on omega supreme now this isn't the loot crate one so don't get too excited this is going to be on the triple piece combiner that did come out with wave four and believe me this is an omega supreme that you've never seen let's get into it what's going on everyone welcome back to power by primus and in today's video we're going to be doing a deck profile video on omega supreme now this is a wave four character that did come out he is going to be a combiner three part which is really really awesome this character is actually a lot of fun to play however it's just been like really kind of teetering on being almost good enough and just quite not there now this is going to be a version like you guys have not seen when it does come to this character. Most of the time that you guys will see him, he is in a blue shell. He's got a lot of really cool blue cards, heroic resolve to be able to hopefully, you know, stay alive for another turn, not get KO'd. Plus it's another double blue card, so it's usually a really tanky list. And then you can try to get to that late game and try to win via Pierce. However, if you go up against Pierce, it becomes a way different scenario. And even just really powerful orange can make it just a little, uh... A little awkward in some situations and you're also trying to get very specific cards so I thought that I would try a completely different list and I've been having a lot of fun playing it. Now the first character we're talking about here is going to be Omega Supreme Base. He has 0 attack, 12 health, and 1 defense. And it does say when this defends, do 2 damage to the attacker, and then your opponent scraps the top 2 cards of their deck. Now the way that this is going to work as far as going to combine is that your opponent has to shuffle their deck, which then you're allowed to combine. No matter what the situation is, you do get to combine. So even if you happen to like turn sideways to attack with a character, your opponent has to shuffle. You then combine, untap, and you're still attacking, which is really, really really powerful because then you get a second swing so it can be really really nice stuff the next one coming in here is going to be the tank it's going to be obviously a tank range i missed specials on the first one my apologies we have three attack nine health and two defense it says when this attacks you may scrap two cards from your hand if you do do one damage to an enemy and then again when your opponent reshuffles their deck blah 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 you get to combine move all the stuff over good stuff and then we lastly have the spaceship who is also ranged it is four attack 12 health and zero defense it says that when this attacks you may scrap two cards from your hand if you do scrap an enemy upgrade so it can be really really fun as far as trying to get a lot of those upgrades off do some damage to some of the characters you totally can especially like with the tank here it does not say that you have to do it to the defender uh you get to do it to any any character now the one thing that does bug everybody when it comes out of the conversation is the art the art is the literally the exact same across all three please ignore that because when we combine it we are gonna make ourselves some really really beautiful art and that is going to be mr. big man here he looks so good it's crazy I absolutely love the art on this side this is the box for the toy um, sorry this is the box art for the toy as well you can also see a little jet fire chilling in the back he's not little but you know compared to Omega Supreme most people are little so really awesome art we are going to be a leader melee and range now none of those are unfortunately going to not make a difference in the orange version which we're going to be showing off today however in the blue version obviously the range can be really nice if you're going for armed hovercrafts and marksmanships we do have seven attack 33 health and three defense which is a really nice amount of defense and then this uh does have pierce four and then finally when this attacks you may scrap four cards from your hand if you do scrap all the defenders upgrades and then do one damage to each enemy so like it has a built-in armed hovercraft and then also scrapping all the defenders upgrades which is something that we really don't get to see in this game most of the time it's returning them to their hand whether it's debilitating crystal or it's ion storm a lot of that stuff or even like disarm it puts it back in the opponent's hand however omega supreme just gets to completely blow all of those up so this is going to be a really fun list this is going to be an orange and black list really trying to push a lot of that pierce trying to get some damage early some ways to be able to extend our lives and then a curveball at the end so let's get into the deck now the first card coming in here is going to be Improvised Shield. We're going to start it off with a double orange battle icon card, obviously helping us out on attack, and then does give us tough one. Now I'm not going to spoil anything yet, but this card may come in handy a little bit later on. The next three coming in here is going to be Erratic Cannon. Now Erratic Cannon is actually a really good card in this list. This is a new wave four card. It is an orange battle icon helping us out when it comes to attacking. It is a weapon and it does say when the upgraded character attacks and you flip at least a white battle icon, it gets plus three until the end of battle. Now we do have a lot of white battle icons in the deck and it's because some of those cards are very specific and really needed kind of in some ways. So this is a really nice thing to be able to make sure that we're actually profiting from those white battle icons 
rounds when it comes to attacking you don't want to like attack flip uh you know a white uh i'm sorry a white battle icon or like two black battle icons and then you're like well this really sucks well i could just turn that into straight plus three attack and it does not go away which is a really really nice thing Next, we're coming in here and we're talking about a white battle icon. It's going to be Force Field. It is a white battle icon. Obviously, you let us flip two more on attack and two more on defense. And then it is an armor and that says if the upgraded character would take five or more attack damage, instead scrap this card and the character only takes five four damage. So this is a really nice way to be able to make sure that our characters don't get one shot. Um, they do definitely have very low on the health pool as far as some of the health goes, which is why blue has usually been the way to kind of lean is just to be able to try to stave off a lot of damage and try to survive a little longer. However, I don't really think that that works in all scenarios. So force feels just a really nice way to make sure that our characters only take four and that our opponent has to spend a second attack back into the character. The next two coming in here is going to be increased durability. Now this is a black battle icon coming in with wave four as well, which is a really fun card. I run this in my take list just because of what it does. It is an armor and then it does say that the upgraded character has plus four health. So again, a really nice way to be able to make sure that our characters get to stick around and have to withstand a second or even third attack is a really, really good thing. This deck is obviously gonna be far more piloted towards a lower you know, damage thing on from your opponent if you go up against an opponent who's running like uh you know lord meg and a bunch of the airstrike patrol characters it's gonna be a little bit of a tougher match just because they're also four wide however going against a three wide or even a two tall could be really fun as far as something that doesn't get to pump out an insane amount of damage every single swing so it's gonna be really good and then obviously that plus four health like i said gonna be really really nice stuff and then even if we get it onto big man omega supreme at the end now we go from 33 health to 37 health obviously we're gonna have some damage on us by the time we combine so just plus four can be really nice now, kind of going on that same train, next one coming in here is going to be Energy Pack. This is going to be a two of, is an orange battle icon, and then it is going to be able to go into the utility slot. It says, put on characters that have 11 or more stars. The upgraded character has plus four health. So this is going to be really nice to be able to put onto Big Man, obviously, because the other characters are not 11 stars. However, if you're able to get increased durability and Energy Pack onto the character, you're going to be able to get plus eight health, which is really, really nice and can be really relevant. And then even if not plus four health, can just be really nice by itself. Next two coming in here is going to be the RR Disruptor Blade. I don't think you can run a uh, black piercing deck without really going for a black battle icon such as the Disruptor Blade. It is really nice. It is a weapon. It says when the upgraded character attacks and you don't flip a black battle icon card, you get to scrap this after battle and does give us plus three attack. Now for the majority of times, we are going to be flipping a black battle icon card, especially since there are so many whites. It's going to be pretty easy to do it. I think I've only whiffed it like maybe once or twice. And even in those situations, it's really nice. Not that needed but it can be really nice if you get to keep it your opponent then has to try to respond to it or try to KO that character because if you get to untap it then obviously you're just getting way more damage and then if we do get to combine to big man with it on the character we get to carry it over and then we now have a 10 attack on our Omega Supreme now the next two coming in which is going to be the curveball we talked about and that is going to be inverted it is a white and a green battle icon allowing us to flip two more on attack and on defense and obviously the green battle icon allows us to pick it up after a combat it does go into the utility slot and says when the upgraded character is battling each orange you flip becomes a blue and each blue you flip becomes an orange so essentially it does flip your battle icons so it does allow us to turn it into a blue shell once we do combine if that is the route we want to go or even if we want to put this on a character early game which is usually what I do I like to put this on the tank in the list just because he gets to like withstand a little more damage your opponent has to scrap top cards from their deck so they get to go through their deck a little bit faster and then it does obviously help keep them alive now it does turn that improvised shield into a double blue battle icon card which is really really nice and then it does give us tough one which does allow us to flip one more on defense so it can turn on that improvised shield as well in the way that we want it to when we want it to and still be able to get the oranges so it's really really fun and then again once we get to big man omega supreme we get to put that on him and then now that three defense that he has becomes seven or eight defense because of our flips and then we have extra health it can be really really nice and it is really really throws off your opponent when they're not ready for it now the next three you're coming in here are going to be all one ofs we're going to have enforcement batons and a bashing shield now these are usually one of in most of the lists that i put together just because i think that removal for a lot of upgrades is very very important and they do have their own uses however they are both orange and green battle icon cards helping us out on attack and green allowing us to get it after combats we do have one weapon and one armor which both will do the same thing one attack one defense obviously and then when you play enforcement batons that you get to scrap an enemy weapon and then when you play bashing shield you get to scrap an enemy armor so really good 
stuff again just to really kind of take care of any of those things that are really pesky really annoying you know whether they have the um anti-pierce armor or if they have a force field themselves or if they have you know their own disruptor blade whatever the case is, is gonna be a lot of nice stuff to be able to get off the table and then the last one of we have is going to be grenade launcher now it's really weird that it's a one of especially in an aggro build right but um i really feel like disruptor blade has more benefits because it gets to stick around and make sure your opponent have to respond to it whereas grenade launcher does give plus one attack but sometimes if we're not matching that number of attack with pierce then it becomes kind of weird you're like oh i'm swinging for like seven pierce six and then your opponent's like okay well i just take six well now that plus one actually just didn't matter the pierce is what matters so i do kind of push a little more to the disruptor blade in this list plus it is really nice as a curveball again to be able to get when your opponent doesn't see it for the most part they're like oh okay well he doesn't really run it and then boom you throw it off the top and then you just get to completely wreck your opponent all right now getting into the actions the first one we have is going to be fight for position now this is an orange and a black battle icon coming in with wave four again really awesome stuff um it does say one of your characters gets bold two until end of turn now the orange black is obviously very nice is the reason why i go with this card versus supercharge which would just give bold three we do get to pick pick up that black battle icon which is really relevant for all this pierce that we're going to be trying to get into as well as those disruptor blades we want to be able to keep them the crazy part about big man supreme is that he has uh pierce four so so if you uh, you know manage to get something like that down and a couple other cards we're going to show here i've gotten him up to like 11 pierce 11 in a swing which is really insane to be able to definitely finish off pretty much most characters that you are going for and not have to worry about it you getting it via the orange damage you're getting it through the pierce which is something that you are aiming for more in this list is that you're guaranteeing that pierce damage so bold obviously allowing us to flip just more cards Next three coming in here is going to be Calculated Strike. This is an awesome card, especially early game. Can do some nice things in the late game, but really nice because it makes sure that our characters get in for damage in the beginning of the game. Um, nothing against the blue list that don't put damage out early and then try to finish it up with a later character. I just showed off my Predaking deck, which can do a lot of that itself, is really try to like just stay and hang on till the end of the game and then kind of win that way. The blue Omega Supreme version is kind of the same way. It's really hard to get in damage early unless you have like a laser cutlass and stuff like that. So this is a really nice way to just guarantee that our characters aren't completely useless in the beginning of the game and then obviously getting that plus two pierce two at the end now turns our mega supreme into nine attack pierce six so we're getting there as far as getting up on that pierce now the next three coming in here are going to be our secret tech. Now because Omega Supreme does have three stars left, most people are running the Heroic Resolve to be able to keep him around, which can be really nice. It is in the sideboard for this one, just in case like I'm in those situations. However, usually when you're running Omega Supreme, everyone kind of knows that that's your star card. So it's really easy and there's a lot of direct damage running around and it only prevents from attack damage. So direct damage isn't gonna save your butt. But Leap of Faith is a really, really awesome card. It is a white battle icon card. allows us to flip two more on attack and or on defense, especially after we invert, can be really nice. Now it does say scrap the top card of your deck. You may play it, and then you get to scrap the next top card of your deck, and you get to play it as well. So we get tons and tons of free value off of this card, and it is a ridiculously good card in the list. It's really, really awesome. The star count is just perfect. It really gets to fit for it. There are so many times when like, I'm looking at a couple of cards in my hand or a couple of cards, I'm like, oh, I really want this off the top. It would be so cool right now. Well, Leap of Faith allows you to get a lot of those things. And the only really bad card, there's two kind of bad cards to get in the list, which is obviously going to be the Improvised Shield and a card I'm going to show here in a second however improvised shield can turn into something good once you do get that inverted and then the other card is just a bad card but only having two of it in the deck is going to be really really small chances of you hitting it for the most part we're going to be hitting some pretty awesome stuff and if you can happen to get some of those free armors for the turn then you can play your inverted for the turn and i have to waste the upgrade slot and find yourself in a really good spot the next three coming in here is going to be System Reboot. System Reboot is an awesome card in the list, and there's a couple of reasons why it's in here, because I know a lot of people don't like giving their opponent cards. However, this is a really good card in the list. First off, it is a white battle icon card, allowing us to flip two more on attack and on defense, and it does say each player scraps their hand and draws four cards. Now, once we get to Omega Supreme's final form, he does have the ability where we get to scrap four cards. We get to remove all upgrades from the defender and deal one damage to each character. I'm sorry with each enemy so really good stuff to be able to refill our hand if we only have two cards and we have to go into an opponent that's got a bunch of upgrades or let's say they got something that's keeping them alive or maybe it's a galaxy prime that's just completely loaded this is a really good way to guarantee that you have those four cards in your hand to hit your opponent now the other side of this card why it's so good is it makes your opponent scrap their hand and draw four more cards so it helps them go through their deck faster helping us get to omega supreme faster so yes it can be kind of bad 
that sometimes to give your opponent more gas. However, you may be able to hit something really nice in their hand and then be able to get them to shuffle because then you're going to find yourself in a really good position, especially again, if we can get it when we attack, we're going to be in a really good spot. Next two coming in here is going to be those two cards that I said were pretty bad to go with the Leap of Faith, and that is going to be Peace or Tyranny. Now, this is a double orange battle icon card, helping us out a lot on attack, and then it does say you may KO one of your characters that has six or more stars. If you do, you get to take an extra turn after that one. Now, I haven't really found myself playing the card at all in the list. Um, I don't think I've ever played it. There's been a few times where I've definitely contemplated on taking it when it comes to a turn. However, I just really haven't pulled the trigger to really see how it does, so we'll see how that goes. But it can, again, be really nice once we hit that invert because now this card does become a double blue battle icon card. So it's really nice once we get to Big Man at the end, then obviously helping us out with damage again in the beginning of the game. Next to coming here is going to be Incoming Transmission. This is an orange battle icon card. Help us out on attack. It does say draw two cards and then put a card from your hand on top of your deck. Now this can be a really nice card just trying to help us dig a little deeper, try to find some Leap of Faith, try to find some weapons, whatever we're looking for. It's just really nice to be able to see extra cards and then being able to put those double orange battle icon cards on top of our deck for attack is going to be really, really nice to be able to help us push damage. Next two coming in here is going to be Heat of Battle. Now this card is really awesome in the list as well. First off, it is a white battle icon helping us out on attack and on defense and also helping out all these whites are really going to be helping us out with that erratic cannon. It does say all characters get bold three and tough three until end of turn. Now this is a really nice card for us because we are running a lot of pierce. We have a lot of black battle icons. So if our opponent is running blue and tough, it doesn't really bug us. It's really nice because we're still going to be pushing the same amount of damage. However, our opponent is going Going to be flying through their cards on defense which is going to help us really get them to shuffle so we can get to big man omega supreme that's obviously the end goal so really good stuff there and then if we are going up against an orange versus orange match being able to give us bold three is really nice because then all of that extra damage that we're going to be pushing our opponent's not going to be able to block and then they're flipping just a bunch of oranges on defense so it really doesn't matter for them and then again going through their deck that much faster so they uh do have to shuffle and we get big man omega now the next two coming in here is going to be heavy handed. Now this is another curveball of a card. I love it in the deck. The random blue battle icons are just super, super nice. Your opponent's like, wait, you actually flipped the blue and you're like, yeah, I did. And then they did their math wrong and you survive at one is really, really fun stuff. Now to mention that it does become an orange battle icon once we do invert. So, hey, you know, that might be relevant. However, we are playing it for the card. It is, does say one of your characters gets plus two attack until end of turn. And then whilst attacking an enemy that has fewer stars than it, we do get pierce four. Now, now, Omega Supreme, I believe, is 22 stars. So, uh, yeah, I guess obviously with the three Leap of Faith, it's 22 stars. So most things are going to be less stars than us. So we're going to be able to get in for that additional Pierce 4. Now, he does have Pierce 4 built in. So now we're looking at Pierce 8, and this does give us plus 2 attacks. So we're at 9 Pierce 8. So it's really easy for us to be able to hit that 9 Pierce 9 mark when we're swinging and flipping a black battle icon card. So it is a really, really good card to be able to just finish off the majority of characters that we're going in into and then obviously if you happen to have a weapon or you happen to get this off of a leap of faith and then like a calculated strike you are punching for an insane amount of pierce damage and then finally, our last two cards coming in here are going to be one ofs. We're going to have Treasure Hunt to help us dig a little bit deeper into our deck, find some more upgrades because they are pretty relevant in the list. And then obviously trying to refresh our hand. So maybe we get to the point when we need to scrap four cards to get rid of an opponent's upgrades. It can be relevant as well. And then Ramming Speed to be able to take care of any of those upgrades that we did previously talk about when it came to Enforcement Batons and Bashing Shields. However, Ramming Speed can hit utilities as well. So based on whatever your opponent is you know, doing, going up against, there's going to be a lot of new stuff coming out with wave five as well so it's going to be very very interesting uh as far as how a lot of things are going to be shifting with that point uh obviously i'll be revisiting a lot of the decks that we currently have once wave five does come out but this is a really really fun deck i'm having an absolute blast playing it even though that it's not like that super competitive i'm not taking it to origins you know it is a really fun deck to kind of throw down and play with like i said especially when you like go ahead and you know go ahead and attack and then your opponent's like, all right, fine, well, I'm gonna swing back into you. And you're like, cool, playing inverted. And they're just like, wait, what? You're what? And then you're like, yeah. And then I'm gonna play this armor and this other utility, and I'm gonna gain plus eight health. I guess you can't do that because you have inverted, but like you get to play the armor and get plus four health, and then it just gets really, really nutty and really out of hand pretty fast and pretty fun.
All right, so there are a few cards that I'm gonna suggest for the list, also based on kind of like how you play and how some of your stuff is in your area. Work Overtime is gonna be my option to bring in here instead of the System Reboot. Work Overtime does say that if you have fewer than four cards in hand, you draw equal to the difference. So essentially, it will always take you back up to four cards, which is the same number that it does take to get Omega Supreme's ability, if that is something that you are going for. Um, this card does obviously not let your opponent draw, so if you're in that situation where like you don't wanna give your opponent gas, whatever the case is, this this is a really good uh, card to swap for it. They're also both white battle icons, so it doesn't really matter too much. The next card coming in is going to be Sturdy Javelin. This is a white battle icon weapon, really good stuff. While this is on a melee character, it has plus two attack. And then while this is on a range character, you, you can scrap it when you attack, and then you get to do two damage to an enemy. This does get around sabotaged armaments, so that is another option if you're having a lot of issues with sabotaged armaments in your area, not really being able to keep any weapons, then I would get rid of the erratics and try to pick up these. However, you are adding more white to your deck and you are losing a lot of damage. So do keep that in mind if you do choose to go that route and then the last one I bring in is hidden fortification given the fact that I really need those blues and that I really am going to be trying to really push for those inverted I do take out incoming transmission to be able to bring in some of these now the reason behind that is because once we do get to invert we can play inverted and this in the same turn so no matter what our opponent does even if we happen to have an armor and they get rid of it we're still going to be in a really nice spot and because we're going to be able to obviously flip a bunch on defense and then all of those uh, oranges are going to now turn blue so really cool stuff so those those are just some of the options that I uh, do have for you guys. Now, if you guys are really interested in the blue version of the deck, I don't want to take away any fire from anyone else who's definitely come up with a deck. Um, I know that we have Jason who has a really awesome blue list here, and then RJ from Wreck and Rule has a really good blue list as well, so I would definitely tell you guys to try to find that one. Pretty sure they have it on their channel, so I would definitely tell you guys to go look up that if you are looking for the blue version. So I hope you guys did enjoy this deck profile video with me breaking down Omega Supreme, kind of showing you guys a fun, different version of him. I would definitely suggest that you guys sleeve it up and give it a try because it is a lot of fun. Again, I really hope you guys did enjoy. Obviously, if you did, a like would be greatly appreciated. I really hope that you guys are enjoying the videos every single day, and I will catch you guys tomorrow for a podcast.